Hey everyone, welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm Jaime in Fuego. Still here at the 2018 Phoenix Film Festival and International Horror and Sci-Fi Film Festival. We are repping this for the fourth year in a row, I think, right? Uh, third year is press, fourth year that we've been a part of the event. Right, yeah. exactly. So um, we are here to talk about another movie we saw. This one was from the Phoenix Film Festival side of the event. But it had enough subject matter where I feel like it, it warranted coverage. It was labeled as a ghostly drama. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, that sounds close enough, and we've done ghostly dramas before, a ghost story. I don't think you've actually reviewed it on the channel yet, though, I right? still need to. I love the ghost story, <laughs> really and this had some it, so. similar surreal sensibilities to it, honestly. We are talking about Carl Hearn's film entitled Touched that starred um, and the, the girl, Lola Flannery in this especially, and then we also had Hugh Thompson. And just the interplay between the two of them I, th I thought was terrific. Um, overall impressions of this film, this ghostly, I, I loved it. It's, it stuck with me afterwards significantly. What about you, man? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the movie too. We, <clears throat> we actually walked in about three minutes late and um, it's one of those movies that is presented in such a way that for a little bit I was like, did we miss something else? And um, yet I don't really but, think we did. I don't did. think we did. No, yeah. I don't think we did. It was just more set up. Like we were, we walked in and we were already being shown his sort of day to day routine. Yes, which, which is I think very, is all we needed. Mm -hmm, which um, seemed very just by, by the books and boring. And right. um, yeah, the, the, the premise is basically about a. Uh, Jan well, he's he's the janitor. He's the he well, basically he the runs building. the building. He yeah, was, yeah. He was left the building after the last owner died, and um, now he basically is the caretaker as well as the landlord. Yep, exactly. So he's doing all the improvements and whatnot, and you know, all the nasty grunt work that you know you wouldn't necessarily see a dueling person do. But he starts out of nowhere um, seeing. I guess the ghost of this uh, former tenant of his that had disappeared, mm -hmm. and uh, they have a very a very strange connection, but a very, very in endearing, and I don't want to use a term like cute or something. It's it's heartwarming, but pulling on the heartstrings at the, at the same time. Right. I'd say. Yeah, th there's uh, this little girl that just shows up in this room that's been empty for a while in the building, and um, yeah, he starts to form this kind of bond with her, and she's chained to the wall. Chained to the wall, and um, he starts to bring her like toys and you know, colored pencils to draw and things like that. Um, but it's never really clear because sometimes he walks into the room and she's not there. And then after a couple minutes, she appears and starts talking to him. So you don't entirely know what's fully going on. Yeah, you're not sure if it's like an actual ghost or if it's just weird things in his head because the term touched in this is actually a term that's used uh, occasionally where somebody has been like touched by God touched almost. By like, God, like yeah, yeah, like they can... Like they can see things and are perceptive to things that other people aren't. So it's a type of kinet telekinetic. I don't know what you would describe it as, but but yeah, that's essentially what this guy seems to have. So you don't know if this girl is in his head or if she's actually there. Right. Essentially. Um, but at the in the the whole time, he's learning information from her, and he's finding out, you know, more about why she was chained up when she was around. Um, it's tied into an event that happened at the building. You know, not terribly long ago, I guess, but um, but essentially he goes to try and figure out the mystery of what happened, and he starts to find things out and try and tell the authorities, and it just it all kind of comes together by the end, and and you find out really some of his backstory, way. you mm -hmm. know, and just what what he went through as a kid that has shaped him as he's grown up. But I, I agree, dude, it shaped itself so cohesively, and it, it was just that kind of creepy dreamy surreal kind of uh kind of not not horror obviously not, not horror, horror no. but i mean drama it was with, a ghostly drama yeah ghostly drama it was it was uh, as advertised and very very effective and what they tried to do to it um we've we pretty much gone over story at this point i think so you yeah wanna, and let's let's hit the, the acting the like acting you said the, the little girl was great the guy was was really good although he was lacking lips but yeah he was Really entertaining, really intense at times, at yeah. a lot of times, and but really endearing. Mm -hmm. he, he was kind of like he, he reminded. Of, he feels a little bit like Lenny from Of Mice and Men, a little bit okay. of like a slower. I, I also had a little bit of uh, Johnny Smith from The Dead Zone, honestly I, too. I've never seen that. So oh, it's a tremendous Cronenberg movie that has a similar dreamy, lucid, um, just kind of trippiness to it, almost similar to this, and just a a character you can tell is just kind of tortured and has been through a lot and yet is uh, just very very content in his isolation and depression and everything which is why 
the connection he strikes up with this young girl it's almost it's like a father daughter kind of thing right and it's it kind of brings him out of his shell as the movie goes on i mean when when he starts wearing different shirts and stuff yep. and i mean there's just little <laughs> subtle nuances to his his wardrobe but all in all the, the performance from both him and Lola Flannery, who is on the 100, she was in uh, the recent Reese Witherspoon movie, like Home Again or something mm -hmm. like that. So she's actually a pretty big Canadian actress, and you can tell by her performance. She she emotes well, she's charming, and she's she's cute at times. But you can you also can tell that she has a little bit of a mean streak. A yeah. couple scenes in particular that show that she has range as a little actress, which yeah, is really well, impressive. Yeah, well, make no mistake. This isn't. It is a ghostly drama, but what I found interesting about it. And this I think I can say without spoiling, but this is essentially, if this movie had been focusing on a different character in this movie, it would have been a, uh, a, a vengeful spirit movie. Exactly. But, yeah. but instead it focused like, like imagine a, a, a Conjuring movie, except it's about a character that has a different relationship with the ghost and the ghost has with the family it's messing with. You good know what call, I mean? Good call, good call. That's yeah, kind of yeah. the way it felt like to me. So yeah. um, I, I thought it, it really stood out for that reason. In the end, I'll say the last shot took my breath away. Same, same. Um, I was on the verge of tears. I, I was like, because I was expecting to be like this fulfilling thing, but I didn't quite get it, but I did because I didn't get it. Like, it's really interesting. It, it, you can't quite, I don't want to ruin it or anything, but it, it was just so well done and left to interpretation. But in such a good way, not yeah. in an annoying way. Absolutely, it did not connect the dots, but it left it left enough clues and was vague enough in certain aspects to be interpretive, which which was right. good. And so, um, if we're going to jump from the acting into um, what do you think, just in cinematography yeah. and the look of the film, beautifully uh, shot, indeed, especially very much with so. some of his dreamy parts. Mm -hmm. um, they used they also used effective color use to of tell lighting. Story. Yeah, um, you know the the the. The movie, the saturation of the film sort of changes. It starts a lot bleaker, a lot more desaturated with less color. Yes. And then as the movie goes on, they bring in more color as yeah. as, as his life brightens. That's what I was so going to say. So does, you know, yeah. the atmosphere and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Br and really brilliant filmmaking, you know what I very mean? Very much so, very much but, so. But very much, very, very much a festival film. Yeah. I don't think this movie would do great if it was released wide. No, it's, it's definitely the epitome of an indie, but yet... An, an indie made with care and with sophistication, and this guy had never done a this guy yeah. had never done a feature before. Mm -hmm. He'd done some shorts, and you know this was uh, Carl Hearn's first feature, and I was so impressed with the look of the film, especially. I mean, I thought it was tremendous. Yeah, it was really good. So uh, they're about to start some panels here, guys. We might have to cut this a little short, but um, the effects there were good makeup effects, very much so. um, uh, at a couple of parts. One in particular near One the in end. One in particular, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it it was just. It was just a really impressive film. I mean, there's not much more we can say besides that. I yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. And the score was good and just added just some subtle sadness here and there where it needed to. And, I mean, just just as a whole, this was impressive filmmaking to me. But of the art house, independent variety, but executed splendidly. And uh, in a way that's going to stick with me, man, this movie stuck with me afterwards. Yeah. In, in a different way than Summer of 84. Yeah, I agree. So... All right, guys, we're going to call it there. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you keep your eye out for this film. It's going to be really excellent, and you don't want to miss it. So um, thanks very much for watching. That is Touched. Keep your eye out for it. I've been Cecil Laird. Gracias, Abenheim, and Fuego. And until next time, remember, stay scared.